The issue of fairness. I mean, this is the argument a lot of vouchers uh, supporters make. Is you know, people who are well off have options. Somebody who is not well off and who whose child is in a failing school, sh why shouldn't that person, those parents, have the same options to be able to get the kid out of a failing school and into a, yeah. one that works with the help of the state? Those parents should have exactly the same options, and they do. We don't we don't say that you can't take your kid out of the public school. We would argue not, and we would say let's work more closely and they more harmoniously. They can't afford. You know that some some of these well, uh, parents you know, can't afford to take uh, the kids out. Life's of Life's not school. always fair, and I'm sorry. Sorry about that. That level of arrogance, that level of puffed up rich man baloney is unacceptable in this state. He should resign. He should resign today. For him to take a look at our poor children in this state and tell them that his answer about them having an option or opportunity for better education is life isn't fair. Well, life should get a lot less fair for Vince Giordano today and he should resign. you. <laughs> what did he say okay. to you? He said he's watching me and he started going like right, that. Right there. Right okay. there. Okay. I don't She's get it. She's a troublemaker. All right. You need Sassy, to watch her. Welcome back to Morning Joe. We're live from Fort Lee High School in New Jersey where there are some very, very energetic children here with us no, today. No doubt about We're it. We're brewing together, focusing on education, and the men are already bickering. Joining us now, Republican oh. Governor of New Jersey, Look Governor Chris Christie. Look at that. You ready for So you like like Mitt Romney? Do you pack the place? Yes. What's going on here? Yeah, you so, so, everyone. So anyway, Governor, we were going to talk about education. We said we we're going to talk about gay marriage. Yeah, let's. So let's talk about. Uh, no, we, we'll stay away from that. So the union guy. Yes. It, you said. That, I mean, well, listen. He, listen, listen. Here's the bottom line: is it, 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 it the, the great thing is every once in a while, in public life, somebody tells the truth. Somebody tells what they really think. And what you just saw there is exactly what the teachers' union thinks. You say, well, what do you do with poor children who are in failing schools and their parents don't have any money and they have no alternative and they see their children's dreams and for they're a trapped future. in the failing right. school and they're dying because they have no money, kids to make places. What do you do with those people? And he says, life's not fair. Mm. Okay, now this is a guy who makes 350 grand a year plus Benny's on top of it, drives his big luxury car into Trenton every day on the backs of working teachers who pay that salary. And of course he can say life's not fair because, man, if you're him, life's pretty fair for him. But life's not fair for the single mother in Camden who is trying to make something better for her son or daughter, is trapped in a failing school, has been waiting for three decades for New Jersey to fix that public school. And, and they haven't done it because it's in the grip of the teachers' union. Good teachers, awful union. You say awful union. Yeah. Um, anytime you attack a teacher's union, the, the response is that you're going after the teachers themselves. Yeah, well, that's why I say good how, teacher. How, good how, do you, how, do you sep how do you separate that message, though? How do you get that message out, not just to the voters of New Jersey, but also... Um, also to the teachers. Well, because you just keep saying it over and over again, and they'll mischaracterize you, and they've mischaracterized me. But when I talk to real working teachers around the state, um, and I explain to them, listen, I'd like to pay you more um, for, for your excellence. Um, I'd like to make sure that we don't guarantee somebody a job after three years and one day, even if they're not performing. Um, I want you to be held accountable. Great teachers have no worry about being held accountable. And what I say to them all the time about their union is that you should have a union as good as you are. And okay. you don't. And, and by the way, let, let's just say for the record here, not all unions, Mike Barnacle, are created equally. There are some governors who are reformers who are able to team up with unions and actually get things done. Well, state by state. I mean, teachers state union, by state, yeah. teachers unions change state by state. In Massachusetts, the teachers unions, I think, are much more amenable to uh, improving education at the local level than some other state unions appear to be. What is the issue here in New Jersey at the union level, not at the teacher level, at the union level with regard to vouchers? Right. Oh, they, they have made it very clear to me and to, the, and to the legislature that that is an unacceptable alternative, and they will fight in every way they can. All 
vouchers? All vouchers of any kind, limited program, pilot program of any kind. No chance. That's what they've said. I, I think we're going to change that this year. I think we're going to get um, a limited program to help you. And really, guys, uh, you did a profile on this school and the superintendent specifically who's uh, had to make some pretty tough changes when it slipped a little bit. He's going to be joining us next block. But it's not a pretty process no. trying to get reform in place. And uh, it's gritty. It's ugly. He looks energetic. He's young. He's able to do a lot here. But can you imagine across the board how we do this? It's very difficult. He had to come in and do some things along with the principal, along with some teachers that were not particularly popular. One of the things he did say, and he echoed something that Arnie Duncan said on our show a couple weeks ago is he would love to restore prestige to teaching. That is, if you're a 22-year-old, there's a $100,000 a year job out there for you. If you're a great teacher, you can make 150, 160. Arnie Duncan said, pay him 200 grand. We're getting, we have tax revenue that we're spending on other things that could be spent on teachers to make it, again, as prestigious a, as position as it should be. So I guess my question to you, mm -hmm. Governor, is why can't we, given the amount of money that exists in government coffers, that's spent on some things that a lot of people don't think it should be spent on, can't you pay a teacher $100,000 a year if they're a great teacher right out of college? Well, first of all, that's the, that's the, the premise, right? That you know, we, pay, we spend more in New Jersey per pupil than any state in America. Right. We average seventeen thousand seven hundred dollars per pupil per year across the state, and in our major cities, we're spending twenty four thousand dollars plus. So you're right; it's not a resource issue. But what it is, I think, from our perspective, is we want accountability in return for that. So I want to pay the better teacher, the better achieving teacher. I want to pay them more. I have no problem with paying them that kind of money. But I also want the liberty to have superintendents like the one you met and principals be able to say when a teacher's not performing, we have an objective review process to go through that. And if they don't improve and they're not performing, then they need to go. And, and we shouldn't be paying people just to occupy space, which in some schools in New Jersey, we're doing. Think about this. In the last 10 years, you know how many teachers have lost tenure for ineffectiveness in New Jersey in 10 years? Zero. 17. <laughs> 17 in 10 years. Holy we have 120,000 public school teachers. Okay, and Governor, the response to that from the union is, how do you define a bad teacher? What's the yeah. objective analysis? How do you know exactly? Uh, Say you yeah. come from a school... Uh, it's so complex, well, Willie. It really is. Let me ask you a question. You have kids? Yeah, I have kids. Okay. You go to back-to-school night? Yeah. Okay. Oh, very overwhelming. All right, now, by the time you get to back-to-school night, do you already have a sense as to whether your kid got the good third grade teacher or the not so good third grade teacher. Yeah, but that's you walk in, everything in life is subjective, Willie, but when you try to put test scores into it, they say, oh, well, test scores aren't good because then you have to teach the test. Okay, well, that's objective. Well, grades, well, grades, you know, th that can vary from teacher to teacher. Every straw man you put up, they knock down. Yeah. It, it, and and they, tell you, they tell us as parents, this is too complex. You're not equipped to judge whether I'm good or not. But, but when you walk into back to school night and your, your kid's in the third grade and you see your friend and you say, um, well, well, who do you have for third grade? And she says, um, well, I, I'm Mrs. Smith. And they go, ooh, mm -hmm. okay, hey. Mm -hmm. good, yeah. good, good, good luck <laughs> next year. Or yeah. they say, I'm Mrs. Jones. And they go, oh, oh you're so I lucky. love Mrs. Jones. God, my kids had her. She was the best. She stayed after school to help them. She emailed me when there were problems. She, she was available. She did a great job. This is not that complex. Well, yeah, but you know, the thing is, obviously, Willie, there have to be guidelines on how we do this. But the bottom line is every guideline you set up, the teachers' union says it's, it's, it's insufficient. There's no way it's unfair. I know when Kate w walked into kindergarten, I had about 20 parents who said, who did he get? Who did she get? Said Mr. Smith. They said, she just got the best teacher she will have in her entire K through 12. Tw I mean, there is, like you said, the, we know who the good teachers are, who the bad but, teachers but are, and as long as the unions stand in the way of figuring out a way to grade those teachers, we're going to have this battle. But what do you do about the demographics that are involved in here in terms of grading teachers? I mean, in large urban states, New Jersey is a large urban state, there are, I would assume, many schools where, where the kids go to school, that's the safest place they'll be all day. Yeah. That's the only place they'll get a hot meal no all day. It's incredibly and so complicated. And to take, so to take those test scores of those well, kids. Here's what you do, it, Mike. Here's what you do, it, and the way we've proposed to do it in our plan, is you judge teachers based upon improvement. Not 
to a raw score. Okay. So if they come in with a group of kids who are challenged, who face the challenges that you're talking about, and maybe didn't have a good education K through three, and then you got them in the fourth grade, and they're reading at a first grade level, right? What we're looking for is improvement. So a teacher who takes a kid in the fourth grade, who comes in with a first grade reading level and moves them up to near third grade level in one year, that's an amazing teacher. Now, if you say if you don't get them to the fourth grade level, you're no good, well, that would be an unfair system. But we want to judge teachers on improvement. How much do they move a child from September to June? How much do they show improvement? That's a fair measure no matter what child you're dealing with because what every parent wants every year, even for kids who have developmental disabilities, other challenges, all they want to see is that their kid reached their maximum potential, mm -hmm. improve. Not that it's going to be perfect. And that's not what we're suggesting. We're suggesting a system that says, let's see, let's test in the beginning of the year, let's test at the end of the year, let's see how we did. Governor, back to the money question, though. How do you entice a teacher, a young, smart, great teacher, not just to go to where I was lucky enough to go, Ridgewood High School, which is one yep. of the best public high schools in the country, instead to go to Barringer High School sure. in Newark. How do you convince that teacher, maybe with some money, to go into that mm -hmm. school instead? A few things we've suggested in our program. One, that um, in, in schools that are more difficult to recruit teachers in, um, like some of our inner city schools that are a little more difficult, you pay those folks more. And you pay science and math teachers more because, you know, and I got in a lot of trouble for this because I said, I don't necessarily think that we should pay science and math teacher the same as we pay a gym teacher. Well, then I came back and said, well, he hates gym teachers. No, I don't hate gym teachers. But I think it's an objective truth that it will be more difficult to convince people who are proficient at science and math to become teachers than to go work as an engineer at Facebook. Okay, so we're competing with the private sector too. Also, merit pay will help as well. You work hard, you perform, you get results, and you get paid more as well. Let's talk about your New Jersey budget. Um, you are known uh, as a guy that, uh, well, you're characterized as a guy that takes on these budget issues and you slash and burn, and yet if you look at New Jersey's budget on education, uh, there's actually uh, a, a, a ramp up of it. Yeah. Where, did, where did you find the money? By cutting spending in other places. Um, you know, what I said all along was in the first two years we had these really difficult budgets to deal with, $13 billion worth of deficits. And what I said to the people of the state is this is going to be painful. But if we make the hard choices now, when we start to recover, which we've started to recover in New Jersey, we, we're going to have the money to spend on our priorities. So this year in my budget, we increase K-12 spending by $213 million. It's now at an all-time time high in New Jersey history, $8.8 .8 billion in state aid to K-12 education. We increased aid to higher education this year. We're investing in the things that we care about. We're keeping hospital funding at nearly a billion dollars to help the neediest in our society who are still having a tough time in this economy make sure that there's safety net hospitals there to take care of them if they need it. And so we've done these things and we're doing them in a way that is balanced that is smart and is investing in New Jersey's economic future because if we get a better, better educated young people who are going to stay in the state, they're going to become better educated workers and taxpayers here. And the people of New Jersey responded with pretty good approval ratings for your handling of the budget, 55 to 38. Uh, big picture? Want to know what you think of Arne Duncan, his approach to education, uh, this president, and does Mitt Romney, your candidate, mm -hmm. have an education plan that's better? Well, I, listen, I have a lot of agreement with the president, Arne Duncan, on these education issues, and I've said that publicly many times. I think Secretary Duncan has been an enormous uh, breath of fresh air um, in the education system. He says it like it is. I don't agree with every single thing, and nor does he agree with me on every single thing, but we've found enormous common ground to work with. And, and the you, president, you consider him a partner in education. No question. And the, and, and the president deserves credit for that, too. He appointed him. And, and he certainly, I'm sure Arnie's not out there freelancing. So, you know, the president allows him to do the things that he's doing. And so, you know, this is my approach in New Jersey is this. I, I am as tough as a Republican as anybody's going to want to find, I suspect. But when Democrats do things right, you've got to give them credit. I mean, because we've got to work together. We can't have a system here in New Jersey like we have in Washington, where everybody's just yelling and screaming at each other, taking their positions, putting out their press releases, and not getting anything done. We're getting things done here. We're going to work together. All right. Um, we need to go to break. We're going we're gonna to have the governor here a bit, uh, a bit longer. So if you can, stay with us, governor. And Is that okay, Chris? Well, you I'm survive? in Jersey, baby. I'm fine. Yeah. All, All right. right. Still ahead on this special edition Don't of the Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to bring Governor Jack Markell of Delaware and Connecticut Governor Jenna Malloy. Oh, that will be interesting. Up next. Portland Public School Superintendent Stephen Ingravalli joins us, and Newark School Superintendent Cammie Anderson. You're watching Morning Joe, brewed by Starbucks.